Hey everyone, this is another episode of Young, Black, and Bipolar. Um, I'm in my car, but this time I'm not moving. But I wanted to share something with you. This um, particular subject matter is going to be about mended relationships. And I decided to pick this topic because over the course of a few years, I can honestly say that I have ruined a lot of relationships because I refuse to get treated for bipolar disorder. Um, just a quick history. I was diagnosed in 2004, but I didn't start getting help until 2015. And I didn't get help as many black people who suffer from bipolar disorder because I didn't want to be labeled. I didn't want to be labeled as crazy. I didn't want to be talked about. And I really, honestly, I just didn't want to accept the fact that I'm as brilliant that I, as I was, as I am, that I wouldn't be able to think clearly or think without being medicated. And so I just had a great conversation with somebody I consider to be a friend and have a bit, had a business relationship with. Well, started a project for her and her company, and then I, midway through, I just kind of disappeared. So we met and we talked and I apologize to her because I can honestly say I was wrong because I started a project with her that she really had our site set on and I planned it out and then I just disappeared because I felt like I just didn't want to do it anymore. And I've done that so many times over. And so when you have bipolar disorder, one of the things that when you start to medicate and when you start to, your mind starts to calm down, you tend to start to realize the regrets that you have because of the relationships that you've broken. Another video that I did on frustration really was the opening, the eye-opening part. I can say that I've damaged relationship with my children. My son, my oldest son, he doesn't live in a house anymore and he doesn't talk to me. I call, he won't answer my phone calls, but that's what I believe because he's hurt. From some of the ways that I thought that I needed to uh, interact with him. And uh, my youngest son, he uh, he's still getting adjusted to the medicated mommy. Where I'm able to talk to him and ask him about his day. Sit with him while he eats and just really, you know, have a conversation with him without fussing at him or making him feel inadequate. My mom, you know, I used to make her feel like a hostage anytime she got on the phone and try to, you know, correct me, not necessarily correct me, but just let me know that some of the things that I was doing was, you know, wrong and I would jump down her throat and make her feel like she was the bad mom when she was just trying to help me through things. And so the relationship with uh, somebody that I love dearly, um, that was also strain and damage because I didn't have trust. I didn't, you know, so many, so many, just so many torn relationships, so many strained relationships with people dealing with me because I didn't want to be medicated and I didn't want to uh, get help. I didn't want to get any treatment. And I, I was very selfish. That's a very selfish thing when you don't want to get help because you, you're afraid of what other people are going to say about you. So you refuse treatment. That is very selfish because people are not able to see the real you. They're seeing this horrible person sometimes, you know, this this aggressive person, this manic person, or this super depressed person. And they're seeing that person and they're not seeing the true representation of who you really are. And that's what people saw for 11 years. That's who people saw. So that's who people thought that I was. They thought that I was the girl who was going to say anything, the girl who was going to do anything, the girl who was just going to, you know, fly by the seat of my pants. I ruined the business relationships. Um, my most recent with my business partner ruined that relationship because I was just all over the place and I had didn't have any consistency or I didn't do anything like I was supposed to do. And I was, um, I've never been a person to blame anything on anybody else so i would always take ownership but it wasn't under the ownership of understanding why i was taking ownership i was just taking ownership because i felt like i didn't i i, I had to accept my responsibility anything that happened
so I damaged a lot of relationships. I know with my friends, 20 plus years, you know, just always telling them things that I shouldn't be doing. And then when they try to say something to me, I would get upset and, and tell them, well, I don't want to be your friend anymore. Um, when I go through a depressive episode, I'm telling everybody bye. When I go through a manic episode, I'm telling them stories that they don't want to hear because they don't want that image scarred into their brains of, of who I was trying to create myself to be. So there was so much pain. I, you cause so much pain when you're bipolar and you refuse to medicate. When you're bipolar and you refuse to keep to a schedule or you and receive treatment. So there's so much pain that happens when you're bipolar and you don't want to get help. And I've caused so much damage. I can't even sit here and begin to count the people that I've hurt. And I don't expect them to understand what I was going through at that time. And I always give this reference. It's like somebody who has an illness that can treat high blood pressure or diabetes or whatever. They have these illnesses, but they refuse to get help because they feel like they can beat it. I felt like I can beat bipolar disorder, that I didn't need any medicine. And I know that there are people in the, the religious realm or who are, you know, spiritual by nature that will say, well, you can beat it. You just got to pray harder. I prayed harder. I, I prayed all the time. I was on my knees. I was laying on my face, sobbing and crying. God, why, why am I like this? But like, you know, um, all things. God will give you assistance to be helped and and I refuse that so again I, I hurt so many people you hurt so many people when you refuse to get the help that you need when you refuse to stay on your medicine you know you can feel better and then you stop and then you go right into a tailspin either way into mania or into depression and I've done that so many times when I was unmedicated I just refused to believe that I was one of the ones. I refused to, I just refused. And in refusing, I have hurt so many people. I have strained so many relationships. I have ended so many relationships because I just didn't want to do what I was supposed to do. And I don't know where to begin I'm not trying to fix those relationships. I want to say that. I am in no way trying to fix any of those relationships. But what I am trying to do is just let people know that I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make my illness an excuse and say, well, that's why I was acting like that. So understand because I don't, I don't expect people to understand. I don't expect not one person to understand what it's like to go through bipolar disorder untreated. I, I'm not trying to do any of that. I'm, I'm not asking for sympathy. I just want to say I'm sorry. I am sorry to everybody. I am sorry to my friends. I am sorry to the people who are in business, who I did business with. I am sorry to my mother, Debbie. I am sorry to my children, Demiriel and Nick. I am sorry to th those who have tried to love me. I am sorry to Sean. I am sorry to Ebony, to Kizzy. I'm sorry to those people who call me a friend. I'm sorry. I am sorry. So sorry that I went so long without getting help. I thought I can beat it. I thought I was strong. I thought because I had all these degrees hanging on the wall that I went through and I thought I can outsmart something that was getting the best of me all the time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry because that's the impression that I left on people's minds. I didn't think that I would ever say I'm sorry because I thought I was right and I'm not looking for a second chance and I'm not looking for sympathy like I said I just want to let people know that I'm sorry that I am truly sorry for not doing what I'm supposed to do because I had a choice in all of this I had a choice to do better. I had a choice to be better. And now with 35, almost 36, I'm deciding to be better. That's why I started, you know, self-improvement towards myself. And my mom always tell me, you can't do better and be better if you don't forgive yourself. And so 
in the process of asking others to forgive me for some of the damages that I've done to them, I want to forgive myself. And it's a daily routine, it's a daily process. It's a process where I'm thinking better. It's a process where I am not, I can honestly say I'm not as creative as I used to be because, you know, um, the medicine does keep me in a singular mind state, but I would rather have a singular mind state than be all over the place and getting nothing done. Um, I'm just sorry. I'm sorry to my son again. When your child leaves the house and don't talk to you, that's when you know you pretty much screwed up. That's when you start to reevaluate yourself. Because that hurts. But it's a realization. Just like getting in trouble and um, <laughs> going to jail for a night. Set me on the track to get better as far as getting on medicine. You know, now my son not talking to me is um, an even bigger push to uh, make sure that I stay on a treatment plan, you know. So, my advice to you, when you refuse to get the help you need for your bipolar disorder, you are literally tearing the hearts and soul out of the people that you say you love, the people you say you care about, the people you say you want to be cool with or whatever, the people you say you want in your life and you want to continue to have in your life. You are literally destroying their souls, their hearts for you. Because not people in the black community don't take the time out to learn what bipolar disorder is. So you become crazy. You become mean you become hateful you become any word that describes you counter to saying oh this person suffers from mental illness you become all things bad i am labeled as all things bad because i didn't want to get help i refuse to get help and so don't do that don't be like me don't let your illness keep you from having the good relationships that you want and you desire. It's not worth it. It's not worth it having to go back and apologize to people because you didn't want to get help. Yes, it is difficult for to be black with bipolar disorder because people don't see the disorder. They don't understand. They just see you as crazy. But you know what? Had I to do it over again, I would have just preferred for people. They would have known what I was going through because you won't know unless you tell them. But I would prefer to have them have seen me as a medicated ivy versus an ivy that was tearing people's tearing people down all the time, being condemning and being mean and being judgmental. I would prefer to be the ivy that they could have got to know versus the ivy that they got to know. And I can't take that back. I can't take back first impressions. I can't take back, you know, things that people have seen from me. I can't take back 11 years of being a devastating tornado. I can't take that back. All I can do is just say, I'm sorry. Can't force them to forgive me. I can't force them to trust me again. I can't do anything about any of that. But I can also start the process of just to say I'm sorry and, and then to forgive myself. Because like I said, I can't take back that time. So I encourage you to get the help that you need. I encourage you to stop on the path of destruction and destroying people who love you and destroying people who are trying to support you. You can't win fighting against bipolar on your own. You can't kick into your own you know, treatment plan. People might say, oh, I can do holistic or I can do spiritual. Yeah, you can do all of that, including with the meds, you know. Get help. Don't suffer from being young, black, and bipolar. You don't have to suffer. Don't suffer. Don't make people suffer. Don't make the people you love and care about suffer because you don't want to get help. You know, you're going to make it. I'm going to make it. We're going to make it. Despite being young, black, and bipolar, we don't have to suffer. We don't have to make anybody suffer from 
this illness. Get the help you're looking for. If you have any questions, if you want a, a certain topic that you want me to talk about, about my experience with it, you know, just leave it in the comments below. Um, share and encourage somebody that you may know who suffer from a bipolar disorder. You know, who's black and suffer from bipolar disorder. Tell them to get help. You can go through so many sites. You can go to your doctor. There's so many ways to get help and get treatment. You know, there's so many different medicines. And even if you feel like I shouldn't have to take medicine every day, you know, sometimes you have to. If you have to take it for anything else, just take it so you won't have to make people suffer. So I'll say it again. Um, you're going to make it. I'm going to make it. We're going to make it. We're young, black, and bipolar, but we're going to be okay. Until the next time, see you guys later.